Hi, welcome to the Eternal Spirit Show. I'm Paul Salmon, I'm a psychic medium, and my guest for today is Leo Bonomo, another psychic medium. Hi, Leo. Hi. Now, is it Bonomo, Bonomo? <laughs> um, How do you say your name? It gets pronounced a lot of ways. It, it actually comes from uh, northern Italy, and uh, uh, so the, the, the actual pronunciation is Bonomo, but um, Bonomo's fine. I didn't know if it's a stage name, you know. No. <laughs> it sounds good. You, really, you know, I can remember it, though. Yeah, yeah it, it, in Italian it means the good man. Oh, um, I'm sure you are. I'll, I'll try to be. Let's find out, shall we? we? Let's find out. Were you one of those psychic children? Did you grow up knowing you had the psychic gift? Yeah. Um, my first experience was when I was um, two, and uh, we... Oh, I was walking hand in hand with my parents, and this was in um, Manor Park, East London, and uh, beside a cemetery. And it was about seven o'clock at night, not too dark. And um, as we were walking along, I suddenly realised there was a gentleman behind us. So I, I kind of looked over my shoulder, and um, I saw what looked to be a Victorian dressed gentleman kind of rise out of the pavement and stand up. Yeah. So my dad said, you know, what are you looking at? And I said, oh, there's a funny man behind us. Um, and of course, we all looked back, couldn't see anything. And this happened a couple of times. Um, but to me, um, it was just funny from the perspective of the way that he was dressed. I just took it as normal. Um, I didn't question it at all because I thought everybody sees and hears these things and um, it was not until much later um, when I was nine or ten uh, but thinking of it now and understanding it now approaching puberty spirit needed some way of closing me down so it wasn't until then that I questioned it um, but a wonderful childhood, all kinds of experiences. So were your parents psychic? Did they have the gift? Um, my dad was a twin. He had twin experiences, uh, but strangely enough, didn't believe in any of this, yeah. um, so, which is odd. So growing up at school, did you realise you were different at the time? I've always felt different since the day I was born. Um, not understanding quite why. The spirit and that I thought was quite normal, but there was just something inside me um, I, I knew that I had come from somewhere um, and that was a little difficult in my understanding but always felt different you know, still feel different now Now you mentioned Manor Park hmm. which I know ah. <laughs> and uh, I believe, you, are you from the East End? Um, I was born in Forest Gate yeah. and lived in Forest Gate till I was I think uh, 22 when I bought my first house Right. But I've always lived in the area and still live, you know, not far. Because I believe we've got a place like East Ham, connections to East Ham, haven't we? Yes, I, I lived in East Ham, that was our first house. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know East Ham. Yeah, it's where the S1 used to go, the yeah. S1 probably still does. So, so you went to school, growing up as we do. Mm. What happened after school? Did you go to learn a trade or profession? Yeah, um, my first real trade, I, I went into jewellery. Um, there were two cousins, one worked on the bench and one worked in the office and uh, my cousin said why don't you come and work with us, they're looking for people and uh, on and off I did that for about 18 years as a goldsmith, mm. hand making jewellery. So how did you get from, how did you learn your route into mediumship, did you go through the spiritualist churches? Um, my first real connection was with the SAGB which is um, Spiritual Association of Great Britain and um, I'd had uh, what you might call a reawakening by that time and this was around the, the 1990s and um, there was a, a medium that I, I, I'd gone to see some, sh some demonstrations there and there was a medium you probably heard of John Brown mm. And uh, I wanted to develop at that time because I feel that whilst people may naturally have gifts, uh, unless you're one of the very lucky 1%, we all need training. And um, so I made some inquiries there and uh, saw a marvellous demonstration with John Brown and thought that's the guy to teach me. Um, 
So I started, started there. But before that though, you're working away at your jewellery. Mm-hmm. What was the initial thought that made you think, oh, get, let's go along to the SAGB or... I was still having um, experiences, yeah. um, spiritual experiences, and beginning to realise that I, I needed to take it a step further. It shouldn't be something for me that was private and for me. It's something that I needed to develop. Mm. And so decided that that's what I needed to do. And the SAGB really was much more prominent at that time. Uh, than local churches, mm-hmm. and so um, that's where I went. You know, so the, the spirit I realise now was just pushing me mm-hmm. to, to to do something. You know. So how long was you in that circle for teaching? I was at, at the SAGB for um, approximately eight years, yeah. and uh, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. So and now you're full time. I believe, working Full-time, medium. Yeah, How do you describe yourself, psychic um, medium or spiritualist medium? I, I call myself a clairvoyant medium yeah. and psychic. Um, for some reason, the public seems to attach a lot of importance to the word psychic, so if you kind of don't put that somewhere, they miss a lot of it. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's what I would describe myself as. Yeah. Right, so how do you work? Do you hear, do you see voices? Um, I'm blessed in that I have all the five senses, all the five clairs, so I smell, taste, hear, see, um, clairsentient as well, so they're all the feelings with it. And uh, spirit, uh, they make me work hard, which I'm grateful for. Sometimes a message will be purely clairvoyant, um, sometimes clairaudient, clairsentient, but an awful lot of the time the whole thing's mixed. Mm. So I'll get some mind pictures sometimes, then I might actually see someone, um, hear something, then get tastes and smells which uh, are very evocative, you know, and they bring back memories for me but also for the recipient. Mm. So what made you become full time working as a medium? What was that initial thought or spark that set you off? Um, as I may have said, I, I don't believe in coincidences and um, throughout my life I've done a lot of different jobs mm. and uh, I started to lose every job that I was getting and then I started to do this on a part-time basis and it got to a stage, um, I've got a condition called fibromyalgia mm. um, and basically it means you generally can't do normal work and normal work hours. So even that came into it. And I started losing work, and the only thing to, to rely on them was, was this. Mm. So spirit, and obviously spirit guided me. Yeah. So how long have you been a, do we call it a professional, or well, your career, Pro- how long have you been? Professional, um, professional about medium. nine years now. Have you? Mm. I bet you've never looked back, have you? No, no. There's not a lot of money in it, you know, no. contrary to what some people think, mm. but um, I'm very blessed to do something that I love for a living. But I mean, you travelled all over the world. You, you talked about your trip to New Zealand. How, how, mm. how did you get to work all over the place? Um, New Zealand was quite strange uh, because uh, I also read on the psychic lines and, um, and I have my own um, um, psychic line which I'm trying to get going. Um, and I was reading for a lady that um, I didn't realise at the time, because Spirit held it back, that she was an agent. Oh, right. And um, I don't know if you believe in the secret manifestation. Tell me about it. Um, basically, um, the universe wants to give you whatever would make you happy. And it's a form of asking and mm. understanding that somehow it will find its way to you. Mm. So I, I use it quite a lot and I just said to the universe spirit, um, I haven't got any money but I want to go to New Zealand. And I started reading for this lady and within about six months she phoned me up on the reading she said, would you like to do a tour of New Zealand? You know, it's all expenses paid. Mm. So the manifestation appeared um, and that's ha- exactly what happened. I'll tell you what I believe in this secret, mm. but it takes a long time to arrive sometimes. <laughs> it can do, yeah, it can do. I think a lot of it is, is, is an approach. I've got a friend and she just amazes me and things 
more often than not turn up free, as, as yeah. that did. Um, but she's got such a knack now, some things turn up within days. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have had it happen, but other things mm. I haven't. Mm. But it seems when it does happen, or what you want manifests, it's not, it's at the time that you need it, not when you want it. It's, yeah. it's like the universe or God, the great mm. spirit, has its own timing to know when it's needed, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, <coughs> I've always found it arrives at the perfect time. Mm. Um, which, as you say, may not be our time. No. You know. But looking yeah. back on me, mm. um, I realised my time wasn't then. So, yes. And it's certain things are now and for the future. Yeah, I mean, hindsight in the sense a wonderful thing because you look back and then you can see the pattern. Yeah. You know. Um, mm. So are you planning other countries to go to yet? Um, I'm going to go back to New Zealand uh, towards the end of this year. Mm. Um, it's not really to work, um, but I've got some contacts there. And um, eventually I'd like to live there. So that's Would mainly yeah, yeah. What, the, um, what, what that's about. Um, I'm also going to go to Australia. Um, one of the companies I work with um, has its headquarters in Perth. Mm. So I'm going to go along and see them because I've worked for them, I think, three or four years now, maybe longer. And it'd just be nice to see them face to face. So you, you did work as a medium in churches, did you? Spiritualist churches, yeah, doing platform it, work? Yeah, um, at one time, this would have been from around the mid-80s for about five years, something like that. Quite a wide area mm. from Maidstone to Huntingdon, um, from parts of Essex to Wales I went yeah. in one night and um, to be honest it was getting too much at that time because I was working full time so this was every weekend I was literally having two weeks holiday and a few days off at Christmas mm. and it was getting too much and I think Spirit really just wanted me to rest at that time. Yeah, mm. excellent. So but then you made the leap from church to private readings and yeah. Village halls, community centres? Yeah, I, I do um, demonstrations in churches now. I'm yeah. starting to do that again, so yeah. that's a wonderful thing. Um, but as I say, uh, how I initially started on the lines, I realised that I needed to earn some money. We talked about telephone lines. Telephone lines, yeah. yeah. And um, I realised I needed to pay the bills with something, of course, hopefully. Yeah. So that's how I started. But I believe, like you said, you've got your own telephone company now um, or yeah, line. It, it's with the company that I'm working with as yeah. well um, based in Perth and they have a setup where they can uh, part fund or help you fund your own line oh, right. so it doesn't actually cost me um, too much um, but it, it's a nice start but yeah. again it's getting the funds together to advertise it sure is, you know, yeah. yeah chicken and the egg sort of thing isn't it it is very much but yeah. I looked on I've looked up your information on the key computer mm. and your website's very extensive isn't it yes there's a it lot is. of stuff <laughs> on it there is a lot yeah let's begin with the teaching because I believe mm. you teach I mediumship do. or psychic ability now yeah how's that going um, that's going very well. I've been at, at my local church for, I think it's about four years, mm -hmm. and um, I've always been interested in developing people, and I teach um, in a very unique way. Uh, most of what I do is channeled in one form or another. Now, you'll have to mention to the people at home what channeling is. Okay. Channeling, um, I would describe it as light trance, where you're given the words or the subject matter um, and channeling can be various different forms it can be written uh, which is something I do as well um, it could be psychic art um, or just what I would call inspirational speaking so we talk so being a channel you're talking about it's like moving your consciousness over to let to some other side yeah to let some other conscience come in be it art talking through you or yeah. writing yeah. So it's a bit trusting, isn't it? You have to trust to give you, yourself you over. Yes, it, it takes a while before you get to the level where you understand that it's okay and it's safe. Mm. Um, so yes, it, it, it is. And um, the way I teach, um, uh, we all work with the light. Um, but for the last uh, three years, I think, um, my guides have um, talked to me about using... Um, the colours of the chakras mm. 
and um, obviously they all have their own colour. Every colour's got a corresponding musical note. You know, all these things are interconnected. And um, basically what we do when we open for circle is um, my guides will use the colours of the chakras. Now, when we say, sh interrupting you, Liam, mm. when we say sh chakras, for those who don't know, yeah. we're talking about energy points, uh, um, yeah. which by somehow consciously opening them up, yeah. allows us to work to a higher sphere yeah um, consciousness <laughs> yeah they're, they're the main seven spiritual points on the body so there's one at the base of the spine yeah. the spleen the stomach the heart throat forehead and the crown yeah. um, there are lots of others and they they break down there there's some at every joint and then they get smaller and smaller to what some people might recognize in acupuncture as meridians mm. right so they're all interconnected again and what mediums do when they begin to develop is they learn how to manipulate those to control them to open to close them um, so when when we begin to work we manipulate them open them up and the corresponding colors spirit use um, in, in basic um, science if you get red blue and green light and mix it you get a white okay and basically what spirit do with me is um, they they use those colors to make their own form of white and the next step from that is because um, they they mix that that white light is for materializations in daylight transfiguration in daylight that's where that is heading yeah. um, and uh, for the viewers transfiguration is where um, Spirit will use some energy called ectoplasm from your own body and they literally put a thin mask over your face and they can change your face so you can see other people. For those who don't know about this, it's a bit intimidating. <laughs> yes, um, it can be strange when yeah. you see it, you know, um, uh, but it's something that you get used to. Yeah. And of course, if that interest there, to see somebody else's face um, on yours is, is something. Well, you say it's something you get used to. I was mm. 35 when I first got into spiritualism. I, you wouldn't catch me reading about ghosts or films or anything, mm. but now I'm used to, you know, like you say, it's what you get used to. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you something, a personal question from mm. me to you now, which I'd like to know. We're talking about chakras. Mm. Can we work with just one one day or meditate upon one of these chakras and see how it works? To be honest, I've never tried that. Um, I can't see why not. Yeah. Um, you can certainly work, um, I think, through inspirational speaking um, with the crown and the throat and yeah. quite probably the heart. Yeah. Um, it's not something I've tried actually. Nor have I. No. I thought, well, I've got you here, I'll ask you. Because <laughs> I might give that a go one day, just... Yeah, I think we'll do that in circle one night. I'm sure Spirit see what will happens. remind me. Yeah. yeah. And if we go blank using that chakra there, we might think, oh, won't do that again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, it's as you. It, it's something that's never struck me before. Yeah. Mm, it struck me. I've just never done it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what did your family think about you being a? a, a you have children, don't you? Um, I have children. Um, what do they think of dad being a medium? Um, the youngest, I think, has got um, some. Um, inclination towards it but she's 16 so uh, for me personally it's not a time I would you know awful lot going on as well as exams and that um, when my eldest was born and um, she's 26 um, she was born in 1986 mm. and in 1984 um, a beautiful aunt of mine passed away and we were in our own house and um, I could see my daughter um, uh, she must have been about two or three um, never seen my aunt obviously was kind of looking out through a window and I could sense that somebody was there so I said who's there and she went Auntie Katie and she'd never seen her mm. um, I don't think we mentioned her because she, she had passed you know. Um, so she, she was quite sensitive um, they kind of leave me to it I, she doesn't have much interest um, my wife, um, quite strange, she doesn't really like what I do. Yeah, um, yeah but it's time for that to happen. Yeah. You've written a book as well, Leo. Now, yes, it was called, yeah. It's called Summerland. Summerland. By Leo Bonomo. Mm. Bonomo. 
just tell me about it. Has it got poetry? Because I know um, you write poetry. Don't I write you? poetry. Yeah, the, um, I've written um, a book called Book of Thoughts, which is about fifty-four poems. Um, I began channeling this book um, just about nineteen eighty-seven, and it was one of those things where um, you know, in Ghost, where he keeps singing Henry the Eighth, I am. Mm. And I kept getting these words, and I got to the stage where I, where I would realise if I don't get up and start writing, I'm not going to get any sleep. So I began to write, and some some nights there would be um, a couple of paragraphs, other nights there'd be pages of A4, and I I'd, I'd be completely out of it, and then come round and read back what I'd written. So the whole process of the book. Um, took around three years but there's actually about three months work in it and I tried to release it in 1987 and uh, publishers are quite strange people because they want to pigeonhole everything and if it doesn't quite fit mm. they don't want to know and I asked Spirit and they said you know just shelve it it's not going to happen um, well with the agent the other thing I asked as well as um, going to New Zealand for free was to have the book published uh, and she managed to get it published. Um, we've parted ways now, mm. and due to some technical differences, I've stopped publication in the book. But it is going to come out sometime this year, again with a different cover, obviously. Um, but the book itself, um, written in 1987, is um, very different because I feel it's the first book that Spirit have written as a novel. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and basically it's about a little boy called Alex, mm. just prior to passing, um, his passing experience, what he finds in spirit, so there's lots of descriptions of spirit world, um, and his experiences as he begins to mature, and it involves a lot of um, different things, you know, uh, there are other experiences there of people passing, um, spirit influence in a quite negative way with Ouija board. Um, it encompasses healing, cop death, um, and in the end, um, perhaps I shouldn't give the end of the book away. No, I don't give the end away. <laughs> there's a part where um, uh, Alex reincarnates again for a short time, um, but it, it's written as a novel, um, and I know at some point it will be made a film. Well, let's let's start. Let the viewers know how we can get hold of this. I'm sure it's at all good bookshops, but through your website as well. Um, it, it's, it's going to be republished shortly, so right. it's not actually available right now, but it okay. will be on my website. I'm hoping in the next few months to, to get the deal together to have it published. Right, so if any viewers want to get in touch with you anyway, yeah. what's your website address? Website address is www leo-bonomo.com or you can contact us here at Felix Toe TV mm. now you mentioned guides mm. are you allowed to tell us who your guides are um, or can you tell us what well, they I'll do describe, for you Sorry. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll describe um, some guides in common with most mediums um, there are several guides that I work with um, my main guide um, is what, what you might call an overseer Mm. So he controls um, a lot of things and uh, a lot of the time he's actually in the background with me. Um, I have special guides for teaching. Um, uh, I sometimes go into trance and I'm a strong believer um, on inspirational addresses. So there are guides there that would inspire me in addresses. Some come through with philosophy, mm. some come through with um, anecdotal evidence of their lives and what's relevant to that particular audience at the time. Um, some come through in the writing. In the original writings of Summerland, um, although I knew the, um, uh, the writings completely different in different places, um, somebody that read the book said, I can see when different people have come in, yeah. which I can't, to mm. be honest with you. Um, so there, there are several guides that were helping with the book. Some come through with poetry. Um, there's a whole band there. And that takes me on to a part of your website where you have like uh, uh, people ask you questions, don't you? Mm. And it's so, it's like a head full of knowledge you must have or your guides have. Yeah, I, so, I don't know a lot much. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's like questions and answers page mm. on your website and it's yeah. extensive where people have written in to you and you've given answers or 
Yeah, it's going it, to me it happens in a natural way because they, they write in and they ask something and it, it's like I, I begin to, to answer it in what I feel might be my view and then spirit just take over so the answers flow naturally. Mm. Um, but yeah, and again I think that's, that's very important. Um, people sometimes have the wrong view of spiritualism and what we do. Um, and I, I have several pet hates and uh, one of them is the Ouija board yeah. because especially in America it's just sold as a game mm -hmm. and it isn't a game. Yeah. Well, so Leo, before we go, mm. what is it that Leo wants to do on this earth plane in this incarnation? Um, to teach, to bring more light to people so that people can love each other basically and understand really what spirit is because I think once they understand that mm. um, it can bring such an effect. If people realise that, yes, we have free will, we can do whatever we want here, but, you know, there are drawbacks. We have to pay back when we do something wrong. And it won't change the whole world mm -hmm. because people have the experiences they need to have. But I think it'll make the world a better place. So just to bring more light and make people more aware. One more thing. Hmm. Where do you see yourself in, like, two or three years' time? Um, in a sense, if I could still be sitting in the back room doing my work, that's what I'd like. Mm. But I know spirit are pushing for me, um, so it, it will entail becoming more of a public figure. This is already starting to happen. I know a film's going to be made of the book at some point. That may be three or four years away. Um, but if I can... Um, achieve that, not for myself, but to be able to enlighten other people, um, that's where I'm heading. You know. Excellent. Well, I hope I've been a bit of a help get you oh. out there on the, the old filming and spread your name, your yeah. work, more importantly that's your work. The work, yeah. It's not for me, you know, we have to keep here going, Jay, yeah. definitely. Leo, thanks for being a wonderful guest. Bless you, thank you so much. Let's keep in touch. We will. And we'll see you again next time. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you.